I hereby call to, uh, to order the Neighborhood Commission Survey Committee meeting of June 10 at 6.01. Thank you for joining us. Can I just share a moment of uh, uh, meeting decorum? Anyone wishing to speak is asked to raise his or her hand and when recognized by the chair to address comments to the chair. Speakers are to keep their comments under two minutes public testimony taken at the beginning of each agenda item. Please silence all electronic devices. The commission may take action on any agenda items that are required by the Sunshine Law. Uh, specific issues not noted on the agenda cannot be voted on unless properly added to the agenda. Okay. Public concerns now for two minutes. We have public concerns. Not related to this. Not related on the agenda. Have any in the room? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, approval of committee meet, uh, committee meeting minutes of May 13. Did you everyone have a chance to look at the meeting minutes? Yes. Great. Do we want to have a call for some if we have quorum? Um, basically, with the minutes. If there's no corrections proposed right now, then they would just be approved as written. And in the future, they can always be Fine. amended. Okay. Is there any uh, comments or questions on the meeting minutes? No. Okay, hearing none, uh, they're received as is. Approved, thank you. Okay, unfinished business. Neighbor, now you wanna talk about the quorum? Do we need quorum to move on? Um, it's also an interesting topic. We're in the committees right now. Um, and the way that the plan structures committees is it's up to the committee to determine how they'd like to make things slower. So I wouldn't worry about quorum right now, but we could do a roll call if you like. Yeah, that's your roll, roll call. We won't worry about quorum, you're correct. Yeah, for committee members, we're not. Here. Chain. Melendres? Here. Kamamoto? And Oshiro is our ex official member, and he is not present. So we have two. We can still continue with this today. Yes, thank you. Okay, the unfinished business, we have the Neighborhood Commission Survey. Members of the Commission Survey Committee shall review, discuss, make recommendations, Survey Committee, Commission mm -hmm. Survey for final annotation, prior to presentation, full commission for acceptance. Do you want to go ahead and share that? Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Survey uh, agenda items. Um, there's been just minor modification of the survey, the survey itself, the narrative. For the recommendations from our last meeting, um, I added the. I'll just go through the paragraphs. Purpose: the survey re re will request pertinent information from each board member. Okay, concerning items which have been brought to the commission's attention by neighborhood chairs and members for redress, and the survey shall address areas for process and procedural improvements within the neighborhood board system. Procedure: the survey will be sent out and data collected via an electronic system. Uh, county systems are MailChimp and SurveyMonkey. That one's been added recently. The invite to participate in the survey will be sent to each neighborhood board member. Uh, each, I've had a couple words here. Each, um, each board shall have a unique email address, not each member. Okay. Therefore, so there's a, there's a typo there. Therefore, when the survey committee receives the responses, the committee will know which specific board is responding to the survey would not know the identity of the respondent. Plan, the survey committee will request each member of the neighborhood board to provide a response to the survey directly back to the commission's survey committee. The results, the results of the survey shall be evaluated by the survey committee with the commission and the survey committee will provide the data to the commission for review and the committee will generate graphic op output representation of the empirical data for review of the commission and make the resulting data available for release. It's a mouthful, huh? Any questions? <laughs> okay, it's a mouthful. Um, 
The results of the survey shall be evaluated by the survey committee with the commission and the survey committee will provide the data to the commission. So, if the survey committee is evaluating with the commission, um, the data will already be provided. We'll make the empirical data. That's okay. a secondary step. All right. So, okay. Do you want that's a secondary step? Okay. For review of the commission. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, any questions from anybody online? Share one recommendation. Because I'm sharing screen, I am having a hard time seeing if anybody. So for the moment, let me stop sharing. Okay. Do we have any comments from anybody online? Searing none. Okay, let's proceed then. Um, the actual questions on the survey, the survey content, very similar to what you've seen in the past. It's okay. I tried to open the participants tab earlier, so if you think this really needs whatever we still see. That's fine. Yeah, let's go to page one. Okay, survey content, the age, item one is the same. Item two, how many neighborhood boards have you uh, served as member or chair? Same for selected, item three, same item four. For each support the communities, how many volunteer organizations do you support? The quantity and the year supported. This is just to gauge, it's really a compliment uh, to the quality of the people that we have in our neighborhood boards. Any questions on page two? Yeah. Anybody from online? I don't see any hands. Okay, we'll move on to page three. Oh, sorry, two, you're on page. Yeah, we'll just now on page three. In, um, okay, I must have a I'm on item five. Yeah, well, well that's bad. Okay. Let me know when you get that. Yeah, item five, neighborhood board preferences in person, virtual, or hybrid. That's um, I just wanted to make reference to that. Uh, the three items, in person, virtual, and hybrid. Mm -hmm. Technically, OIP doesn't like us to use hybrid. Mm -hmm. They just, it's either in person or virtual. virtual. And the way the law is written, if you have a virtual meeting, you automatically must have a place, a physical place people can go to. Mm -hmm. So the virtual is actually a hybrid. So you know, and, and just saying we, you know, and I think maybe the easiest thing because people will get confused when we put virtual. Maybe we can put in parentheses hybrid. Yeah. yeah. So at least they. Okay, they, we can make that change. Yeah. It may, it's just again, it's just a technical thing from OIP. Mm -hmm. They told us don't use the word hybrid. And I'm like, everybody. Great. Knows Thank you. Yeah, I remember during the EK administration. Uh, when we had controversy about meetings, right. that we have to have a, a physical location for people that are handicapped. Right. So then we went to hybrid naturally to accommodate the boards. Great. Okay. Item six: How would you rate your board's efficiency? Item seven: I rate the assistance support. Item eight: Concerning the council of chairs. This is an item two where we could modify instead of hybrid, uh, put uh, virtual and then a hybrid in parentheses. <clears throat> Great. Any other comments on page three? So, um, yes, chair. For, yeah, um, no, please. Sure. The council, um, preference venue, um, because venues can be costly mm -hmm. to hold in person meetings. Um, I'm, I don't think that it would be a question in which we should ask them because. A location would be dependent, an in-person location would be dependent on what the NCO office would be able to provide. So um, it really comes down to where can the NCO secure and what the cost will be. Right. And, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and, and I agree because if we ask this question, there is a sense that the per the people responding will be able to determine mm -hmm. what how it will be um I, I, I imagine we would all love it to be at the Sheraton to make it cheap, <laughs> but unfortunately that can't be done so um it, it is a concern that I don't want to give people the impression that they will be able to determine the venue for mm -hmm. the conference of chairs no I agree with that I think we're asking preference uh before you came on board we had great 
meetings. Uh, council of chairs right over here to Aloha Tower at the, uh, the school there and the house we've had. So, or we could use a county building. It doesn't matter and just wash out the cost, but a preference would be good because I know that in the past, the, uh, it really helps to encourage participation if they know it's going to be as such either a, a venue location and virtual. So let me let me think about that one. Thank you, Brad. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sure. Instead of preference, what is your preference? What if the word would be changed to what is the type of council of chairs meeting and not venue, but meeting? you would like set up and then what is the type the type which would be an in-person type or a virtual type and then leaving the nco to determine where can we get a venue but type of meeting instead of preference of where we can do that i just i'm looking at just bringing in more members to participate no that's a good point thank you for that okay so noted okay um Next page, item uh, page four, uh, item nine, concerning board education, preference board education. Mm -hmm. This one again, I'm going to change everything. It says virtual. I'm going to change it. Lord, per your comment, to hybrid to avoid that. And then uh, board's venue, excellent, very good. And that's naturally it's up to the the board itself. Uh, item eleven, concerning the commission, I read commission support. I think we're going to get back a lot of positive uh, comments here. Item 12 concerning training for great, please rate your board member training. That's going to tell us if the, if the board itself thinks they need more or not. Can, um, can you clarify between nine and 12? Nine and 12. What is the difference between board education and state or training preference? And concerning um, <clears throat> education itself can be written can be mentoring. We've done a lot of mentoring in the boards, a lot. Uh, training is formal. You're sitting down, you're being trained. Education is other than that, or can be a combination of that. Yes. If I could comment. Sure. Um, I don't view the NCO as educators. Mm -hmm. So I think that they would be limited on what they can do to educate. Mm -hmm. um, they could probably put together maybe a PowerPoint as they have for what is the recent um, PowerPoint that you folks did for the Council of Chairs. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't see them as educators, and I don't think that it's their place to educate. Maybe they might have to bring some others in. Right. I don't know. But then there is possibly cost to that. Mm -hmm. So. I think that if that question were to be up there, it's it could send a message to the neighborhood boards that, oh, we're going to get training in, you know, training could be broad in whatever mm -hmm. topic they want training in when the NCO, again, you're not educators, you're not a school. Yeah, this, the questions are not uh, so, focused towards NCO at all. We've had some of the best training from the from the board chairs themselves. Okay, from but the then it would have to come through the NCO because they would make the they would have they're, to... they're facilitators. NCOs facilitators. Okay, but ultimately, um, they'd have to set up a venue. They'd have to gather the people, whoever they would be able to. Yeah, train. they're facilitators, right? Um, that I'm. I'm... I'd like to leave. I like to leave that on because I want to. I want to gauge where the people think they are. Because we've had a lot of requests in writing about more education, a lot. Um, and I think that we've had uh, some of the problems that the commission has seen from the boards is perhaps because, or at least in part, that there's more training that needs to be involved and understanding. And that would be what I talked about training. I don't specify here, but it but it could be uh, it could be the neighborhood plan. It could be uh, the sunshine law. It can be board interaction, but I didn't want to go ahead and specify that because I want to keep these questions short. We want to capture basically what they when they when they think of training, what comes to mind. That way, we're trying to capture 
the top level, not necessarily to drill down. We could drill down later, but this is just top level now. So maybe my question yeah. is, who would be the lead on the training? Mm -hmm. Who would secure the people who would outline the NCO is a facilitator. What does but, that mean? Right. NCO supports the boards, supports commission, and we support the boards. Right. So but that would have to be determined. What does the neighborhood plan say? Didn't say anything. Then we should address it. That's a good point. We'll address it. So, so we were told that we cannot give legal advice. Mm -hmm. We couldn't talk about OIP and Sunshine Law. Mm -hmm. And OIP has told us they're not doing in person trips. That's fine. That's so the that's the that's the good one for us for the issue of Right. They're not any sort of legal authority. Mm -hmm. um, no. You run the office. That's what you said. We you know people ask us advice about <clears throat> what we do in this OIP situation, but when right. push comes to shove, we legally cannot give a formal opinion on OIP sunshine law. Right. right. But these questions are not geared towards NCO at all. Well, but they're I mean, a general I question. I think there's sort of a presumption, though, when that is considering more training and therefore mm -hmm. education, who is performing that? You know, we need to redefine that better in the plan. You're absolutely right. I know in the board met in the board meetings, neighborhood board meetings, we rely upon heavily upon our assistance. And that's right. something that we're getting advice on is maybe you shouldn't be doing that as much mm -hmm. because if your board hypothetically were to do something to violate Sunshine Law because we gave you the advice that something was okay that wasn't, that's putting us in a liability and we're not. I think it's synergy also. That's a really good point for your uh, assistance. But I know that functionality though, uh, we work together. And when you're sitting there with the chair and the assistant, they're, they're, they're tight together during the meetings. Okay, they're thinking like almost like one where, uh, and then our, our vice chair right there, so that together we pull the meetings together. And if the chair is missing something, the assistant chimes up. And it may not be a correction or a comment. It may be something guiding the, the process. And that's, that's fine. It's not being an expert. It's not saying I'm the expert. It's saying process and flow. And that's why we're successful in our board meetings, because you have a good process yeah. flow. Even you have a... You have a, you have your board meeting, mm -hmm. and we have had situations where we were told the staff was told, you shouldn't say anything. We don't want your opinion. We don't want you saying anything. <laughs> I think. Well, that's uh, something. I think we need to train board members more well, okay. and working so, together. At the end of the day, it's the board's decision. Right. Mm -hmm. and the end of the that's day, the tough part. At the end of the day, whatever the board decides is what the board decides. We do not override them. That's so, a good point. You know, I mean, that's correct. It is their meeting. That's correct. Yeah. I think, and that's why when you talk about training, it's like okay. And well, it should be. I think to yeah. so the second point of what's on our mind is, if you want to talk about training, the first question we would have is, well, have you read the material? That exactly. Training. Right. Okay. That's why we can maybe have that conversation later with some of the questions that we mm -hmm. have. But that's why they were geared in that way. It's, we get on one hand, we deal with people who say, we don't need your opinion, mm -hmm. you know the rules. But then on the other hand, on the other side of the mouth, we hear, we need training all the time. Mm -hmm. I and think, I think then perhaps this would spur something else from the, from the survey, something that would go out to each board member questions directly and the signature. I've done that before in training. I do that training in the state. I say, okay, you're coming on board. This is your checklist, your board, your onboarding checklist. Have you read this? Do you understand it? This, do you understand it? This, do you understand it? Yeah. One thing is the Sunshine Law certification form. Mm -hmm. They sign it. But that's only one, one item. That's only one item for the board. The one signed with the Sunshine Law. That's, that's, that's only one item, though. Right. I know, but that's I a think... big part of it. But that in itself, we constantly get questions about Sunshine Law, but everyone signed the form saying they watched They the watched the video. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, Chair, I think that at this time, concerning board education, the, th the three things that we should expect board members to know is, have they read and do they understand the neighborhood plan? Do they know Robert's rules? That's and correct. do they know the Sunshine Law? Those three things they, they need to be educated in, if we want to use that word education. But that's not on the NCO to. No, it's not NCO. Of that. No, that's correct. 
So That's I correct. think we could we should be specific in saying, do you know the neighborhood plan? Do you know Robert's rules? How to use Robert's rules? Execute it? Do you know the sunshine? Law? Yeah, we could tweak. Let's go to the next page and address that. I think uh, there's a very board member from one of the Yes, go ahead, Greg. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, just right. a comment. Thank you. I appreciate um, a moment to just interject. Uh, just a comment from from my side, from my perspective as a board member, um, and also someone who facilitates board meetings uh, for other boards I serve on. We just had a Kakua Council meeting today, and I serve as the president. Um, my you know, I'm sitting here and I'm I'm listening to something and I don't quite understand a little bit of, of what I'm hearing because we obviously as neighborhood board members, we have training that we're required um, to certify that we've gone through and that's the sunshine law training. So I had to sit and watch two videos, part one and part two, that's training. Uh, this survey question is clearly intended from what I can see to Glean information as far as if you think as a committee that we need more training. And my perception of watching our board, at least the Waikiki neighborhood board and other boards that I watch, is that many board members need training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so Robert's rules, I'll just re be very brief and succinct here, but Robert's rules is a very thick book. I've got the short version here, I've got the larger version. It's very comprehensive. Even I don't know everything in Robert's rules. Nobody could ever know everything. Uh, it's that complicated. It changes every so often. But it would be good to have a simple Robert's rules um, training video. And, and and again, these should all just be videos online that we're able to watch and we certify that we've watched. And then lastly, you know, another one that could be part of it is the the board procedural things, decorum, um, right. process, and, and those are the areas. So yes, absolutely, I think training is is required. And I think the question to ask us what we think should be there is important. And hopefully we're doing more than just checking off boxes. I hope there's an opportunity that we'll be able to provide. Uh, and I really think it should be in each section, but this is just me, that we can provide a little bit of feedback. Um, you know, what what do you recommend for training? I'm, I'm verbally telling you in this committee hearing, but it's not going to do any good if you do a survey and you don't ask us in the survey, what do you suggest is needed for training? So I'll, I'll stop there, but I hope I gave you a good. Oh, that's just fine. Um, one of the items we've talked about that we started already is to get questions from the board members themselves to incorporate in the survey. We've also extended that invite to NCO. And we received some questions from them also, um, but this is also brought up another item, not a certification sheet, but a sheet that actually should go to all the board members saying, I, I write contracts for the state that I have read, understood, and agreed to the following. And then to state the different criteria, different items we're supposed to know just to be sitting on the board. Because when we're sitting on the board, we're, we are the conduit of communication between the government and the officials and the community and the community and the, and the government, okay? So we are the conduit of communication. And in that, we work within a constraint. And the constraint is detailed in the neighborhood plan. So when we look at that, and when people come, I've had people come in, many, many, many questions on training. So I think that I may have to, have to delineate and drill down more on these questions on training. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. But I, I agree with you that training is, is really big. Um, We've had so that's why even in the beginning of the survey, I tweaked, I tailored the uh, the cover memo a bit because I've had questions on that. Did that we've addressed it several times to be more specific? But when we sit on the on the board, it's, it's more just sitting there and just you know uh, being there. It's it's working within the constraints of the law and the item that we've already talked about. Robert's rules is how we run it. Uh, the neighborhood plan, what is that's our Bible. Uh, but also we have to know how to how to run an efficient meeting. I remember a few uh, years ago, a few cycles ago, 
when uh, we had a uh, a uh, neighborhood chair training a, a training session, and uh, Mrs. Paanui from North Shore did the best job I've seen, and I hope we have that video somewhere on how to how to run an efficient neighborhood board. It was great, phenomenal, and that's been some of the best training we've had is from the seasoned board uh, board chairs because they've been there, they know what it is. They know they know theoretically the what's in writing. They know the narrative, but they know how to how to run the board, and it resolves so many issues so easily, and that's why like on our boards too, we should foster that perhaps about the mentoring, coming alongside a person because we're not talking about right or wrong. We're talking about grooming them up, grooming them up to be efficient in that. And, and I've mentored several several young people, and they're great, just phenomenal. But I start with what does it say. Read the neighborhood plan. You have a copy of Robert's rules. What I did for our board, I was able to uh, acquire. It's not a cheat sheet. It's pulls out from Robert's rules, and I should make it a bit a copy. Make it a. It's a general. Yeah. There's a there, simple general. There's really uh, uh, some areas in Robert's rules which are common and redundant, and they show how do you respond in this? Like how do you call the question? How do you move the meeting forward? What is your latitude? And those type of things, perhaps you should make available to send out to all the board members, maybe even attach it as an addendum to the survey, something like that to help. Because when you're, you can know everything, you can know the neighborhood plan forward and backward, you know, and, uh, but when you're sitting there and you've got so much in the you know, chair or vice chair, and you have so many things to cover on the agenda and people are up there already talking. And and it's and it's and you have to see that's one thing the neighborhood assistant really does helps us to stay on track, helps us to stay focused on the mission. I, I like that. Um, it's just it's tough again because I've also been in a position myself where I've tried to submit you know some ideas and advice, and the chair stops me and says, "This is not your meeting. You don't tell me what to do. I'm going to run this meeting." And so I just wanted to relay that. But at the end sure. of the day. The meeting, the meeting shouldn't be complicated. Look at your meeting. Right. They're not complicated. They're simple, follows the agenda. Um, nothing is taking up too much time. It's pretty even. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what we want to do. But at the end of the day, it's for the community. We need to get that's more right. Involved. That's correct. For the board members no. to go back and forth with the discussion. And that generally sparks complaint. <clears throat> Is when board members have issues with other board members, not so much a resident right. board member issue. And and so that's why we really want this to be thought for. We mm -hmm. want this to be, we can go two different ways with this. We could go first and foremost, has everyone read the material? Mm -hmm. Before we talk about training, has everyone read the material? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is before you begin to talk about a subject, everyone has to at least have tried to read this. Mm -hmm. And then if they have questions later, that's a different story. They're just constantly, hey, I have a question about something I haven't read. Give me the answer. Mm -hmm. That's one aspect. But that's if you want a board that is operating under very strict, I have to know such and all, I have to know what yeah. it is, I have to know parliamentary procedure. The other end, and this is where it gets thought for working, is how much of that is necessary conducive to the public participator. If our goal is to increase public participation, is there a certain point within the scope of like, okay, there are some laws we have to follow, mm -hmm. but if maybe I'm a non-native English speaker or maybe some sort of situation and I want to join the neighborhood board, and all of a sudden you're telling me you have to follow these rules, you have to follow these rules, you have to watch this video, how conducive is that to be necessarily participating in the system? And is that democratic? So that's what that's right. I, I think that I'm sorry, go ahead. Finish your statement. It well, I want everyone to think about how inclusive this is because we can go slam books. Here you go, everyone learn this. Or we can go, how can we open this up and bring this back to a community driven thing where right. not everything boils down to did you do this or did you right. help this person journey? So then that leads into changes in the neighborhood plan to be a little bit more flexible. Because right now, as I read the plan again and again, I'm looking at know the neighborhood plan, know Robert's rules, and know the sunshine law. And if the intent is to be successful, as it is written now, everyone needs to be knowing those things, you know. And then again, too, 
you folks are not educators, you're not teachers, but you can maybe put together, you know, uh, videos. And I don't think that we should expect you folks to teach these things. We you know, open the right to maybe provide resources, but then again, you can't make you can you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink it. Yes, you know, so there has to be when it comes time to the neighborhood planning committee, there that might be something that needs to be brought up to see if there's some flexibility. Yeah, and the last, I just want to bring up the complicated aspect of it. That term was used and agreed on by the participants in the last. Um, what do we call the informational briefing with the chairs and the vice chairs of all the boards. That was just last month, maybe two months ago, might have been in April. Yeah. And at the end of the meeting, when it was Q and A, that was kind of the census. Mm -hmm. We don't need to make things more complex. Mm -hmm. We do need some procedure, and there's a difference between complicated and efficient. People wants to be efficient, but we don't need to stretch it out because we've got to bring it back to the community. Um, these should be similar to town halls. Yeah. where we're talking about what's important in the community and not how are we improving the minutes. <laughs> yeah. There's a, when you bring on a new employee, like the young lady you just brought on, you do an onboarding with her, saying this is where you are, this is your office, this is what you do, these are your tasks. And she has a job, job description, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to know this, 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 and then you go through training, this, 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 this. When I came on working for this contract for budget and finance, I've been contracting for the state 20 years, but I still went through SPO, other 18 programs. And it was great, but there's a lot of things in there that filled the gaps too. So the same thing, but now let's go ahead and pull back a second. It's up to the chair of each board to ensure that each member that comes on their board is properly onboarded. Each member can help out in this. Keep properly onboarded. Versus volunteers. Yeah, but we. Right. We, we, if we think of how much time we burn in just going back and forth, I think it would be apropos to consider putting together an onboarding document for the chairs. If they're going to be the chair, then they're responsible for everyone in their board. And I take that position. We brought people on board. Uh, we mentored them, we brought them on board, set them down. Here's the plan. Here's this and here's this. Give them a copy of Robert's rules and, and taught them how to do things. The biggest thing that I learned when I came on the board 10 years ago was a lady that was a great lady. She had been a teacher for like 40 years and people were talking all this stuff. So she was, they sat me down next to her and uh, I started talking and she looked at me, she goes like this. And I go, we're, like, we're supposed to talk, but she goes no, like this. She says, God gave you two ears to listen and one mouth to talk. Therefore, you should be listening twice as much as just speaking. And I, I physically, I pulled back, I said, oh. And then I just watched and listened a lot and only interjected when it was necessary and it worked. But she's just a great lady. So it's kind of like old school. And the thing about the video teaching, especially with OIP, that's good, but it loses something. We used to have the onboarding uh, congratulations at the uh, uh, the building, the historical building by Honolulu Holly. And there, we had a live presentation to an attorney on OIP, and that was much better than what I've seen on the video. Because the video, you just go through, go through, go through, and you're done. Boom, sign the form. But when you have a live body there to share with you, and you also have the narrative in front of you, then after that, you can stop and ask questions. And when you had 400 people in the room that were elected officials talking to a person and this person's experience and sharing with us, much better. So perhaps we should add, I mean, well, it's video also, is what you need, but it's also partially indicative of the response that we get. I think we've had multiple sort of intermediate conferences with the chairs and vice chairs where we've invited, and if you think there's 33 boards, on average 66 chairs and vice chairs combined, we've had several meetings where we've invited them. We've had a physical location and an online, and we maybe get about half, half. 20 to 30. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 uh, so we're not going to put on a huge production well, and bring all these people and do all the training for 25 to 30 out of right. 66. I think years. that what I've seen successful in the last decade is when right after people are elected, you bring them in and do that 
like you said at the, I forget the name, I'm so sorry. Mission Memorial. Mission Memorial, yeah. Do a big presentation, honor everyone, shake the hands, and go to the training right then. That is the best. Because people are perked up. They, they want to learn. They're sitting there like this on the edge of their chair. They want to know how to be efficient. They're not talking about nickel and diming things. They're talking about how can I do my best? I'm volunteering my time. Labor is expensive. How many people did they have at the after shooting thing? You get free. And 30, 35, and that included about six of our staff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're about the yes. shooter training. We mm -hmm. did. 35 total people. Right. One officer, six of our staff, several people who on the neighborhood boards. So maybe 20 ish people out of the, our entire neighborhood board system moved into our mm -hmm. after shooter training. Yeah. Right. I was uh, yes, and I advertise it too. I put out emails to the board members. I think that. In that context, that item is okay. If two people showed up to me, it's okay. The reason for that, you may be saving lives. You may be unstressing somebody. So, just saying we have 400 something members until I showed up. I know, that's fine. But you probably have the video stored somewhere that you can make it available to people too. So it's not it's not lost data. It's 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 a ongoing training item but let's continue on i want to get through this yeah. um let's talk more about training itself i will pull out the item that i've used with uh make it available to you for robert's rules it'd be great to give it to all the board members um, but we need to look at training more because we've had so much not cadre so much discussion about it it's something which is still a hot button we need to actually nail this Number 12 is there so much yeah and 13 i just finished 13 how do you run efficient board, neighborhood plan, sunshine law, neighborhood commission responsibilities? These things, if you went up to any board member, any board member, you ask them, what are the neighborhood commission responsibilities? They'll say, uh, I don't know, because they don't know. See, there's certain things that we need to delineate, and it has to be developed from within. You say neighborhood commission responsibilities. I'm sorry. Our commission, the commission itself. The commission. Yeah. So there's a number of areas which we touch a lot and we expect a lot more board members and they're volunteers. It's free labor. The county could not afford to pay us. You know, we do it out of our love for the community and wanting to, to build a better community. So I'm, I'm really honored by everyone that's on our, on our boards. So let's continue on uh, 14. We talked about this before LL support commission meetings. Yes, no, no preference. Uh, 15, I'll read the board meeting. Uh, talk about meeting minutes. This is just objective. Uh, 16, what I like the best about the neighborhood board system is. And then let's go into uh, 17. I believe the following recommendation would, would create. Yes, I'm sorry. sorry. Just, just go ahead. One little correction, maybe mm -hmm. um, regarding 14 and uh, uh, support uh, by a little. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have support by a little for any of the boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do not have a little there. Mm -hmm. What we have is a contractor that does the video. And when they get the video finished, then they send it to Olelo and Olelo just airs it. Right. Yeah. So their Olelo is not at our meetings. Oh, I agree. Right. So, but they don't the people, the board members don't know that. Well, yeah, but they see somebody shows up, they call them Olelo. Right. I know, but so, so that's what we want to correct. But right. the commission having support by Olelo, um we don't have support by Olelo. Uh, and there is a cost for this. That's fine. Yeah, we can't well, ask yes or no for contractor. Right. Subcontracts other people to help us shoot video. Right. Okay. And then they okay. Okay. send it to a lot of broadcasts. That's fine. At the end of the day, this question might have sparked from something that has came up with this commission back here ago. Mm -hmm. What we resolve now is posting all of these videos. And that wasn't done in the past. A lot of the board meetings were recorded and you could find them somewhere later on. The commission wasn't, but mm -hmm. I'm recording this and I'm posting this video on YouTube and that up on the top of the mm -hmm. agendas and stuff. So it is a public recorded meeting and it is available. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know that the question itself it's, is we, we, okay. we yeah. can remit 14 if you put out a written narrative to the boards themselves saying exactly what you just told me. I hope that that's true. The YouTube because all of the boards will have the no. um, on your no, but they don't. They don't understand that. 
they need to be told in a narrative. This is where this is what we have for the commission this is available for you. And this is how you reach it. Step by step. I mean, when, I think this talks a lot. No, I don't, I don't mean talk. I mean, brute narrative because I do the narrative too. It takes time, but once it's done, it's sweet because you don't have any more questions on that. Yes, Lord, I'm sorry. No, I'm just wondering, um, the people that call you and tell you all this stuff, mm -hmm. how come they're not calling us? I was just going to. We're in the field. Um, We're in the field. Have we got a phone number in the website? Yeah, they may not even know you. I don't know. I, I was just going to ask that because if they're discussing these things, is that not breaking the sunshine law? Because are we, we're not supposed to be discussing. Well, the ones what, that I. Everything, everything that's on here was not in discussion. It was things that were brought up over the last 18 months but he's, in writing from he's right board though. members and chairs. Right. He, they should be contacting us. the NCO. Oh, they should. We, we, we instead of point contacting that. you. And we do, we do point them that way. That's correct. Yeah. Just have them call us because if they don't even know us, then we right. can't even ask a, answer a question. Right. And you folks work so closely with the neighborhood boards on a daily basis. Our neighborhood assistants are at every meeting. Exactly. Maybe exactly. Even, maybe even letting from your office. So like you know, CSPO creates circulars, which help to define more things from the law to put them into the hands of the procurement people, the contract people. Perhaps you should look at doing something like that, an NCO circular saying this is what we do, this is how to get a hold of us. And this is what we're we're here for you to do. Well, I'm something like that. Because it's 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 not we do have some material like that. Um, we also just started bringing those on the table to every meeting where if we run out of even paper material, we have some QR codes that will take you to our website, YouTube. Um, some people don't even know secure. Oh, that's a good idea. I think perhaps we could send out an email to each board member, not the chairs, each board member. This is who you are, this is what you're doing. This well, way you're here they, they come to the meetings in the NA sitting right there. They know the NA by name. They got a question, they just ask. Yeah, but it's, it's, I think we're, we're, we're going around a little bit. Well, this is a new situation that we're not sure where it's coming from. But I mean, it's been very clear for decades that we respond to them for the affairs on the commission. Hence the office. The commission. So, right. what we're wondering is where right. is it coming That's from? That's right. If someone has some sort of Day to day affair thing. Like how do things go online? Who is shooting your video? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the level? Like what well, we're wondering is why is that being channeled to say to you? Right. Of on the no. office? Yeah. Right. Everything that's here. No, no, but we don't get why was channeled to no, 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 NCO in but writing. I understand but from we complaints. Don't, we don't know why it comes to this commission. From complaints. Quite. Right. Yeah. Well, people, the board members, the board chairs come to the commission for support. That's why we. That's why we're contacting. Well, it's but the, everything, it's everything from here, here everything, yeah, everything that's here though, was generated not verbally, but by written responses from chairs or board members to NCO to the commission in the form of a complaint. But these are all. But there weren't many. There weren't many, and so. I would I would agree with you, Dylan, in that the commission 1211 201 shall be responsible for establishing policy. We're not to be involved with the day to day that comes strictly to you folks. And so I am in agreement with Dylan that they, they shouldn't be contacting any 1 of the commissioners. They should be contacting the NCO office. And I think that. That needs to be clarified more and more and more. That should be broadcast out then. I think right. that before you came on board, there were a number of uh, complaints that the commission had to handle in this area. And what, so that's that's actually what spurred a lot of this about. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. So that was like prior to three years ago. This is over the last 18 months. A lot of complaints. Yeah. Yeah, but what were they? Can you can you tell me what they were? They were procedural. Can you, they can had, you have them written? Can you form them? Tell you have them because they're addressed to, to the commission. And you, we adjudicate How do you know we have them? No, because you're the one that presented us to us for adjudication. Well, no, those, no, those, those are complaints are, against us. Right. Those are complaints from board members against other board members. Mm -hmm. no, there was both. There was no, both. But they cannot file a complaint against the commission mm -hmm. office. No, they went to the commission for assistance with an item which 
They didn't help me. We didn't get a complaint. We've never got that. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't recall. We can address that. Coming to we the address that. Just, I just want to see the complaint. Did they fill out a form? Did they just put it around it? Did they send it to you? Can you send it to us? No, everything that's here actually was generated from yeah, where the complaints is that? here. Where is that? In your there? records. It's not in my records. The complaints we have are really related only to the board member to board member or board member complaining about the board itself, but not against us. I didn't, say the, I didn't use the word against. I said that it was something that was brought to the commission. Yeah, everything is here was brought to the commission. I, I can tell you, I don't, I don't recall that because over the past 18 months, what have we been dealing with? Schubert versus oh. whoever. And that's <laughs> before that. Well, that three no. years I've been here when you folks all came in and that's all I know that we've been dealing with is neighborhood board 13. I'm not familiar with any complaints that came in other than a few of the comments that initially came in on the very uh, on one of the survey committee meetings that um, were written and we had a copy of that and that was back in October. Other than that, I'm not, I don't recall any other comments or um, any issues that would generate a survey. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and continue. Thank you for that. Um, oh, yeah, please go ahead. Greg, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, Greg, yeah, I'm go sitting, ahead. I'm sitting here and I'm a little bit in dismay um, when you're talking about the uh, complaints or how you got the, the information that you have. Um, I personally have had concerns with the Waikiki Neighborhood Board, um, Sunshine Law issues, procedural issues, neighborhood plan violations. And I, you know, I've tried working with the board members. It's very difficult. Our chair has been very difficult. So I've actually filed some complaints and you're saying you you are not receiving them. I'm I'm aware of other no, uh, board members. That's not, I, that's not what I said. There was, I, we didn't receive any complaints against the neighborhood commission office. No, not no, you, Lloyd. I'm sorry. The other, the other um, uh, member on on the far right. I'm sorry. I forget. I'm I'm bad with names sometimes. Um, He's meeting me. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not seeing. You know, I I can't see the name tags from here. I I apologize. Oh. That I, I don't Hi, know you Greg, personally. Nice to meet you, Mahia. Mahia, thank you, thank you, yeah. Mahia. Um, yeah, my head's a little spinny right now. I'm not feeling well, and I, I do serve on four boards now. I just got onto another board, which is Hara. So the um the the concern I have when I hear you say that is that you're not aware of other complaints. You mentioned one, but I have some pretty what I feel are high level complaints, things that really need to be addressed by the commission. And I'm hoping that when these things are brought to the, the table, or they should have been by now. That you're at least aware of them, uh, and then there's fri frivolous ones. Let me finish, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, and then there's frivolous ones that are like retaliatory against mm -hmm. me. I'm usually a target because I'm trying to do some justice fighting, and so then there's a there's a retaliatory aspect. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Whatever you were gonna sorry, say. This is Dylan Weitzel. Um, no, I, I I mean I don't I don't want to say that she misspoke, but what I do want to say is no, like. That wasn't what we were referencing. Mm -hmm. well, the complaints that, as Lloyd clarified, we were discussing things that have come through that are pointed out on the survey that we're confused about. But any complaints, including yours, have been processed. I believe you should have received at least a notification uh, for that. Um, and so those have been looked at by the commission and signed off by the commission chair. So yeah, I I've only I have just heard so you... his complaints in our meetings. Yeah, and just so you know, and it's been a while, I, I've only re received an acknowledgement of receipt, but I have not received, um, I, I'd have to go back and look, but I don't know if I have any other more detailed. Um, well, I'll have, to, I'll have to talk with you about that because we received a certified mail from one of your decisions that said it was running. We got the slip receipt back. Uh, that was, again, the frivolous um, one against me, and I had to, I had to spend hours uh, writing three uh, responses to three different frivolous, invalid, you know, what I consider completely frivolous and false accusations by a member of the community that used to be a board member uh, on the Waikiki Neighborhood 
Ford. And he also lives across the hall from where I live. So I, you, I have not received anything other than that by certified mail. Um, guys, I think that you can take this offline. Yeah. We'd like to go ahead and go. Um, I don't want to focus on the word complaint. It's, I'm not into complaints. I'm into communication and clarification. That's what this is going to do. And that's what the series should be doing is putting together communication to help our communication with the community and the board members be clearer and help to streamline things. I think we're going to come with a lot of good ideas for education too. It's going to come out of this. Okay, guys, Greg, I'm not cutting you off. I'm saying though, we have so much time in the survey committee and I want to focus on this, if you will. Oh, no, and that's the, fine. No, no worries. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's also um, emails going out to the board members asking them um, the same way we send an invite to NCO concerning, do you have questions to go out with the survey? I'd like to put out any questions also some about any, some questions from the boards themselves into the survey. Something like that gone out. Not yet. Okay, not yet. Um, item 15, rate the, the minutes. We've talked about that before. Um, item 16, the best thing I like about the neighborhood board system is I've had so many complaints, not complaints, pardon me, so many compliments from so many people, a lot of our elected officials about the neighborhood board system. I've had other islands come to me and say they want to bring a neighborhood board system onto their island. Maui's ready for it. Maui's ready for it. Big Island could work wise soon, but Maui could, could handle it now. They're really cooperative in that. They really see the benefit here. Um, 17, I believe that in following recommendation, we create improvements for the neighborhood board. Uh, and then that's 18, please attach additional pages. So I thank you for all your comments. Um, I did get a listing of some of the uh, questions from NCO. I'll go through those, incorporate those. And this week we'll have going out to all the board members. Um, Dylan, I have a, a listing of all the board members. Can you email me your, your current listing of all the board members? The last one I put out for alerting people about the uh, active shooter training, some came back saying no longer there. Can you s send me an email of the current board? Yeah. As far as the You're saying for all board? All board members. 400 members. 431. Get that list. It's been around a while. <laughs> Actually, Lloyd gave it to us. Hey, wait a minute. No, it was in an email. It was on an email. But thank you for doing that. I just want a current listing. Okay, do we have any other comments or concern comments on or concerns on the survey? This survey. This survey. Correct. This survey. This survey. I have put out a olive branch saying anyone that has you have my email address. My personal one is sjm.hnl at gmail.com. You're welcome to go ahead and send me any information, comments, concerns, uh, items you'd like to see added to this for consideration. It'd be great. We got to take that up. Um, okay, I'm done. Do we have any other comments from the floor here? I would, I would just say, uh, just to clarify, sure. We include that because it was asked for us to we're invited to provide comments, mm -hmm. and so included in the packet. To review it, there are several documents. The first one was a document, basically a findings of fact of a survey that we found just by happenstance that was done in 1979. Yeah, so it was basically a five year review of the yeah. mm -hmm. It's a very interesting historical review. Mm -hmm. I suggest everyone look at it, but basically, a lot of it points back to is this increasing public participation? And mm -hmm. so, followed up with that with a supplement which was an original survey done in 1978, which was part of this larger discussion on this five-year review. Mm -hmm. And some of those questions, like, yeah, they had to be updated a little bit to match what modern times, but um, we did lift some of those because they thought that they had some utility. And people are more than, the commission is under no obligation in the survey committee to take any of our questions, but we just wanted to put it out there as, if we were to do a survey, right. these are the types of questions we would ask. And the reason why is because what we're looking at is how can our objective is how can this type of survey inform another committee? So in the case mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. and I'll give you an example. Towards the very end of our survey, um, we have from uh, 39 to uh, 
45. Mm -hmm. And basically all questions on hot water seats, subdistricts, forum. And those are the types of questions that we're interested in because we get a lot of discussion on we're having trouble meeting forum or it's difficult when it comes to voting because we have these very niche sub districts or we haven't been able to fill the seat forever because another from this sub district can use here. And your commission in itself has had multiple people come mm -hmm. to this commission just within the last year year or two alone and say our board needs help producing our quorum because we can't uh, we can't make quorum. Mm -hmm. So those are the types of questions that we're interested in where we can gather that type of data. We can pass that along to the planning committee later and say, based on the data we gather, half the boards or more than half say, hey, you know what, subcommittees aren't working for us. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, that could be something that could be worked in the planning. Mm -hmm. you know? So Agreed. that's where we're from. I like those questions, but these don't really, the average board member doesn't address them because they're not going to make a decision on the districts. It's not, it's not their authority. Well, that's no, not they do make a decision. No, they, we know they, the, the, they're, they're already, they're in a given, each, each um, board is under given constraints. Some have sub-districts, some do not. We don't have sub-districts. I was surprised how many, when I, I went. Yeah. yeah, I know, but you see, but the average board member, that's not their concern. It, it is because it they is. are, they mean, they, the board needs to make a decision. Shall we ask the commission to remove them? The, yeah, the board does that. Right. But the board member just operates within the constraints they have. Well, but no, 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 but it's on they, it's mine. They if there is a problem, they come up here. That's correct. The board, the That's board fine. must discuss and decide if they would like to ask the commission to remove the sub districts and make it at large. So, so we want to so know they've done this board member. Yeah, well, no, that's, that's, that's their prerogative and they will come to you. Or come to the right. commission, but the point is they have a say in it, and they express that. Yeah, but the average member doesn't care. They don't care. They They're just too care because they have to. They can't come here unless they vote on it. No, no. They, when the board member sits down, they take care of the business on the agenda. If the business on the agenda is concerning sub districts, they take well, care of it. Get to, if it's not, they won't. How do they get to come to here without because the approval of the rest of the board? Well, when there's a problem on the districting or quorum or sub districting, then it comes up and then they put it on the agenda and then they discuss it and then they need to, they come to the commission, the then they come to the commission. And, uh, and they if there's know. a problem, they come to the commission or they come here and then we make recommendations like we have in the past. Why wouldn't we ask them? Because they're yeah. dealing with it. I'm not, I'm not saying not ask them, I'm saying most average board members don't care and, and we'll get that don't. we'll get that so those that it, it, they don't answer it that's fine that's fine right but we just okay. need to know if the and as these, these are the people that have problems with quorum do you think it would be better if we just eliminated for your board all the sub districts and put we it can see about putting these questions on sure thank you may i comment chair sure okay um so I have reviewed um, the NCO survey mm -hmm. and um, one of the duties of the commission is to provide oversight evaluation mm -hmm. for the neighborhood board system. Mm -hmm. The survey by the NCO mm -hmm. I found to be thorough mm -hmm. and it covers, it touches on on a lot of things, it's very comprehensive. It touches on sub districts, demographics, mm -hmm. um, district boundaries, committee meeting, special meeting, mm -hmm. neighborhood board's ability to make recommendations to the city on identifying problems, mm -hmm. solving problems, delivery of government survey, uh, increasing public participation, community engagement, outreach to increase Again, public participation, knowledge of the neighborhood plan, Robert's rules and the sunshine law. And overall, I believe that the NCO survey is a check the pulse of the current, an examination of the current and neighborhood boards and the system. And I think that the data and information collected 
with the questions um, in the survey by the NCO will give the commission an evaluation and review of the effectiveness of the neighborhood boards and the system as it currently is. Mm -hmm. I also believe that the goals should be for improvement, how to best move forward, how to represent um, as uh, neighborhood boards, how to repre best represent their com communities and um, with the intent of closely following the neighborhood plan for the betterment of their communities and to encourage uh, widespread participation, public input to affect the decision of government. Great. So I, I like what the NCO has put mm -hmm. out. I, I do, and I see the need for all those ty different types of questions as well. And I see some overlaps with the survey that uh, you put out as well. So I'm in support of what the NCO has put together because again, they work closely with the neighborhood boards on a daily basis. And I think that the commission would appreciate the data that comes in from that and help the commission to better evaluate the neighborhood boards and the system as it currently is. Well, and we're not here to necessarily tell we do or right. to take on our survey, but it's just with the invite. Of right, and it's collaborative effort. This is what, this is sure. this is just what we asked. Right. So, mm -hmm. Dylan. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make a comparison um, and how we, I'm really interested in these types of questions of uh, being a neighbor system for the last few years. Um, but on your survey, you had the question that said, uh, how do you rate your 14 minutes? Mm -hmm. And then here we have uh, one question is, do you believe in residents of your neighborhood, your neighbors, do they, do you think they read in there? That, that's an interesting question. Right. I'd like to know how many people do they think are engaged on the reading level versus maybe attending or watching the virtual mm -hmm. uh, recording. Right. Um, and then there's several questions that follow you know, what percentage of the public in total reads your minutes? How often do you yourself, the board member, read the written minutes? Um, and then another one, did you know the board is legally responsible for preparing their own minutes? Because it's after the setting of the plan, but oftentimes we hear from board members, uh, whether it's at the commission meetings or even at some other board meetings, say, we don't like the minutes. And we say, we're just providing a draft. Mm -hmm. Whatever the board would like to be final is up to the board. Um, so these are some interesting questions. No, they are. Very, very yeah. Question that I have. think that um, the commission survey is more based on the operational level. The NCO survey is more based on administrative level. I like them both. Is I think NCO is the same in terms of increasing participation. It should it depends be. On, yeah, but it just depends on the perspective. No, just mind. We want people to answer the questions. These questions. We, right. want, people, we want them to answer them. Well, but I am going to take them in consideration. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you for allowing me to comment. I, I like the sure. collaborative effort. Yeah. You like that. Okay. Anything else? Anyone in line? Okay. Let's go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're done. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for uh, participating in this meeting today. I hereby close it at 705. Thank you. Too late, I closed it. <laughs>